All right, guys, I'm really excited for this episode of various productivity hacks for you. As the title says, I'm all about working smarter, not harder. And that doesn't mean that we don't do like hard, quote unquote, intentional work in our business. I know that's so important, but there are also things that we can do every single day, simple things, some that might be no brainers, but we aren't doing uh, that we can just do to get more out of every ounce of the workday, little things that make us more productive. So as I was prepping for this episode and kind of thinking about what to talk about this week, I thought about what are some of those things for me? Like, what am I doing that allows me to work smarter, not harder? What little hacks allow me to get more done in less time? Um, Because interesting thing, I don't work 40 hours a week. Most weeks, I'm working less than that, but run a multiple six figure a year business. Um, So it's not all about how much time we're putting in. So that's what this episode is all about. We're going to talk about easy, um, fast, quick productivity hacks so you can work smarter, not harder. So let's dive in. Hey guys, it's Elizabeth McCravey and you're listening to the Breakthrough Brand Podcast. Each week, I'll bring you workshop style trainings that teach you how to stand out online, design success from the inside out and create a breakthrough business. It's time to turn viewers into raving fans and design the business and life of your dreams. I'm so excited you're here. All right, guys, welcome back to the Breakthrough Brand Podcast. I'm so excited for this episode and to talk productivity hacks with you. I think some of these are going to feel like I never thought of that. And some of these are going to be like, I have thought of that, but why am I not doing it? And now you might be compelled to actually do it. So as the title says, I'm going to talk through seven secrets to working smarter, not harder. And as we dive into this, before I even share even just one of them, I want to encourage you to, as you listen, pick like a one or two that you're like, I'm going to implement this week. I know my episodes um, come out on Tuesdays, but you might be listening to this at some other time completely. So whatever, like a week until a week from the day you're listening to this, but picking um, just one or two that you're like, I'm going to implement that ASAP um, and see results from it. Because the implementation is what gets you the results, guys. Just listening to it uh, is not enough. And I know right now our world is still so crazy. If you're listening to this live, we're still in 2020, which means there's still a pandemic happening. And I've mentioned this in like little moments throughout the podcast, but 2020 has legitimately been the craziest year of my life. And I know it has been for so many of you as well, like a combination for me of coronavirus, obviously messing up everyone's schedules, but also losing my dad has been insane in the grieving process, but also in the like, legwork that has come with that of me being um, his oldest daughter. And I just have felt truly stretched thin on time, which is where so many of these little hacks have come in handy for me even more than um, they normally do. And I know many of you guys listening have also felt really stretched thin. Um, Maybe you have kids at home still, and that's like changing up your schedule, or maybe your spouse at home or roommates that won't leave for work, all kinds of situations. So um, I'm really hoping this episode feels timely and giving you some great productivity hacks. And I also want to say really quick before I get to the tips, I promise I'm going to get to them um, really soon. But I just want to say, I was thinking about this this morning. Thank you for being here and being a podcast listener because I feel like I have the world's best community of women and some amazing men as well who listen to the show. And I really appreciate every review you leave, um, sweet emails I get, Instagram messages. Um, The reason I was thinking about this is just this morning I received a message from someone who discovered my podcast podcast this week. I don't know how she found it yet. I actually asked her, but she found it from somehow this week and was saying it's a gold mine and she's been binge listening and she feels like now she has her own private business coach for free. And that's how she worded it, um, saying the show felt like a business coach. And I love that. And I love the feedback you guys give. And so I just want to say thank you for that. If you're someone who has left a review or sent a sweet email or message, I read all of them um, and I respond to most of them. I definitely intend to respond to most of them. But anyway, I want to say thank you. And if you're a regular listener, I want to ask if you have not left a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, if that's where you listen, or if you listen somewhere like Stitcher, even you can leave reviews there. But I would just like to ask you to leave a rating or review um, if you're a regular listener. If you're not, no worries. Um, Just keep on listening and figure out if you like the show or not. Um, But if you are a regular listener, I would love to hear your feedback and a review. 
Okay, now that we have talked about that, I'm ready to get into the tips. So again, seven secrets for working smarter, not harder. And this first one is gonna be one that might completely catch you off guard because this is one I feel like not enough people know about. It might sound a little hokey too, so I wanna throw that out there, but this is seriously a favorite thing that helps me stay focused. I wanna say it's worth trying to because this is probably like the most low maintenance, easiest to implement tip I'm going to share. And that is listening to binaural beats. Um, Okay, if you're like, I don't know what that is, I'm going to explain but there is a YouTube video, okay, and it's just one YouTube video is the only one I listen to that I let play in the background on my computer on most of my work days. And I've done this, I mean, for at least a year now, it's hard for me to remember exactly when or how I found this YouTube video, but at least a year of time and the video, it's not a song, it's not a TV show, it's nothing like that. It's binaural beats and isotones is what it's called. And the title of the video. I'm going to actually link to it directly in the show notes. So you can just click over. But the title is Focus and Creativity, Creative Thinking, Visualization and Problem Solving by Neural and Isotone Beats. And this video has over 2 million plays. So clearly, I'm not the only one who loves it. But I want to kind of tell you it's like four hours ish of just again, like really subtle um, audio, like is the best way to describe it. And I want to kind of read you a little bit of what they say about it. So you can just understand like why this is supposed to be powerful for focusing. So it says this audio, which can be used during work, study or meditation, uses alternating sequences of beta, alpha and theta waves to encourage fluid and abstract creative thinking, which is the alpha and theta waves, uh, while at the same time maintaining a state of focus, which is the beta waves for effective problem solving and high level information process. Processing. So it moves through those three frequencies of the alpha, theta, and beta tones in five minute increments for, and I want to say, I literally have it pulled up. I think it's like four hours ish. Yeah, it's literally exactly at four hours of audio. And Again, it tells you in the description more about it, but I'd recommend just trying it, playing this in the background while you work, whether that's on your computer or you put it on your phone and do it through your headphones, either way. And for this, I keep the volume really low. So it's not something like you don't want to play super loud. You don't even want to really notice it for me. I almost don't hear it, especially depending on which one of those different tones it's at. I won't even hear it. I keep it pretty low, but it's still in the background um, happening while I'm working. And now if you're like, okay, when should I listen to this? So my favorite time to listen to this is when I'm writing and I do a lot of writing in my business, like more than I even realize sometimes. So every podcast episode, you know, starts as an outline. I literally listened to it um, about two hours ago when I was outlining the episode I'm now recording. Um, I, you know, I write social media posts, typically like four of those a week, there's email marketing. And now I'm writing my course content, which I've been listening to this on repeat when I'm writing the course content. Um, so when I do my design work, though, that's the time I'm not listening to this because I typically like to listen to music or a podcast or even a TV show sometimes when I'm doing like deep into like a, building a website or something, which is something I was doing all day yesterday, actually. But for me, listening to this while I'm writing is really key. And I know in your business, you probably also do some writing. And it might totally be all in my head. So if you're listening to me talking about this, and you're like, Elizabeth, that's not making you more productive. Um, That's okay for you to think that but I don't think it's all in my head. But I totally get that some people might, but I really do feel so productive and focused when I'm listening to this while working. So again, I'm linking directly to the YouTube video in the show notes, you can just click over to it. And this can become your favorite, like a most played YouTube video too. Or you can explore there's so many of these online besides the one I use, but I've used this one for over a year. So I'm just like, I'm sticking with what I know. Um, but that's my first one listening to binaural beats while you're working. Okay, the second one, schedule your entire workday in advance. And uh, when you guys have heard me talk about this before, first of all, so let me just say that if you're like, Oh, I've heard you talk about this, let let me like, let you hear me talk about it again. Because if you aren't taking action on this yet, maybe I can convince you to right now. But when you talk about working smarter, not harder, planning 
is so key to that. So when you go into your workday with no game plan, you're going to be responding to everything reactively, reactive to every email that comes in to like the client question to answering the phone to like spending too much time on social media, Um, reactive to do also whatever's easiest tends to be what we do when we don't have a plan. Like I know for me, it's so much easier for me to just like sit on tailwind and like pin Pinterest content, whereas that's not necessarily the time best spent in my business when I'm at my state of being most productive, which for me is at the beginning of the workday. Um, so basically, you waste a lot of time when you don't have a plan. And I'm all about working less. Um, like I said in the intro, I don't typically work more than 40 hours a week. Some weeks I certainly do. I do track all my time. Um, so I do like at the end of every week, I'm able to say this is how many hours I was literally on the clock. And most weeks it's less than 40 hours. So any time though that I can avoid doing stupid, unproductive, stuff in my business, I take it because I want those hours I'm putting in to give me the most back out of them. And many of you know about me doing my whole schedule the entire work week in advance because I did do a whole podcast episode on it. And that's episode 46 of the podcast. It literally came out on New Year's Eve last year. And it's been one of the most downloaded episodes on my show. Um, People really love it. I still get messages about like how impactful it was. And so I'm going to just direct you to that if you've not heard about me talk about this before versus like going into all the details again, because that's like a one hour long ish episode. But basically, I every Sunday night or afternoon, I schedule everything on a calendar. So I write out a to do list that's like, okay, here are all the things I need to do this week. Everything from like, I want to work out three times to like, I need my admin time in the inbox to I have to finish the first draft of this client's website, like it all gets written down. And then I put it all in the calendar on a digital calendar. um, And then I just follow the calendar. Um, So in my week, I look at okay, today's Thursday, what do I need to do today in this order? And yes, life happens. um, And things get moved around. Like literally, you guys last week, week. Um, what day was that? I think it was actually Wednesday or Thursday of last week. But my husband, Adam, got stung by a yellow jacket. And now we found out he has an extreme allergy to yellow jackets, but he had a horrible, scary allergic reaction. Um, but he like blacked out, could barely walk. I had to take him to the hospital. And I spent from like 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the hospital that day. And that obviously was not on the calendar. Um, and my day got flexed. And I really didn't even care about the stuff that was on the to-do list anymore because I was just caring about making sure he was okay. But for most weeks, you're going to find that if you choose to stick to what's on the calendar, you're able to. And it really helps you get everything that needs done, done that week. And it's so fascinating to me watching how this helped me this week. So I want to kind of share an example. But this week, I had a few really important things to work on. So just kind of tell you what they were, um, because today's Thursday that I'm recording this. I'm a a couple weeks early on the podcast. So you guys are hearing this um, a while after I'm recording it. But one thing was getting started on a custom website project, which entailed me coming up with like the fonts and color choices and doing a whole first draft of the homepage and sending it to the client. And then I wanted to do a couple days worth of focusing on writing for my course that's coming out. At some point for designers, I'm writing all the content that's going to be in the lessons. Um, And so I had a goal of like one day I wanted to write in the entire module on pricing in your business. And there's another module I'm going to work on later this week. And then I also had the goal of outlining a podcast episode and recording it, which is what I'm doing right now. And so those three things were like, okay, those are like the must get done's in order to keep moving my business forward. And any of those could feel more urgent. Like for example, the client work could feel like, oh my gosh, that's so much more important than me working on my course. I don't even have a launch date for the course yet. Like that can totally wait. But this client, I told them I would have this stuff to them by Friday because I did tell the client that. So when I put it on the calendar, Instead of everything feeling so urgent on Monday that I can't focus on anything, I'm able to see that I put Wednesday, which again, I'm recording this on Thursday. So Wednesday of this week, I spent the entire day working on this client's project. And then this morning, I was able to send them the first um, draft of everything. And then on Tuesday, also in the afternoon, I worked on the client project. So because of that, on Monday, I was able to spend the entire day working on my course without feeling any guilt around it. 
I'm like the client stuff, even though that has the due date, that's the soonest, I have an entire day planned for that on my calendar. And I know it's going to get taken care of. Same for this podcast, like I need to get this recorded. um, Because literally one of my teammates is who works a lot on this podcast, she's going to be out of town. And so I have a date I have to have this done by, but I know it's going to be done because it's on the calendar. So this helps not make everything feel urgent, basically. So yeah, anyway, that's just a little explanation of how it's helpful. But go listen to that episode to learn how to do it. It's episode 46. And then if you're like, okay, I'm not ready to do that yet. But like, let me try a mini version of this today, or maybe tomorrow. What I would tell you to do is pick three things that are on your agenda or three things, maybe you don't even have an agenda right now, but three things that like you need to do that are must do things and put them on the calendar. Or if you don't want to just decide like, okay, I'm going to write a list that today, these are the three most important things I need to get done. Um, And one of them might be that you just like manage your email inbox. And one of them might be client work, whatever it is, but write them down and decide to like, make sure that you actually get those three things done. Another way to do it would be to look at your whole week and pick three big picture things that you're like, that absolutely has to be done this week. Like I said, for me, it was writing my course, a client project in this episode. Those are like my three big things for the week. Um, But anyway, focusing on that is going to help you be more productive and get more time back because you're not just letting your time run you. You're literally running your day. Um, So that's the second tip. Schedule your entire work week in advance. Um, So those were kind of my first two longest tips. Some of these are going to get shorter as I as I continue going here, guys just so you know. Um, Okay, the third tip. Um, This one's going to sound funny, but do batch work ish. Um, I'm not going to actually encourage like the full batching system necessarily. But I want to kind of tell you how I do this. So I say ish, because I am literally not perfect at all at batch working. I think getting stuck in like it has to be done one way really causes us not to do it at all. So everyone's heard of batch working at this point, if you're in the online business space, probably. But basically, it's focusing on one thing for a long time, instead of moving between tasks. So it could look like you spend two hours on client work, then two hours on admin working your business, instead of an alternative way of doing it would be like you kind of do 30 minutes on a client project, and then you go in your inbox, and then you have this phone call, then you're back to the client project. And now you're writing an email, and now you're doing a social media post. And now all of a sudden, you're moving between so many things in the day. And that's obviously less productive because you get out of the flow of things. And the reason I say I'm into like batch ish working is because I know people I have friends who do crazy types of batch working like things like recording seven podcasts in a day or doing 10 meetings over a two day period or doing what's called like a weeks and b weeks where like one week is focused on a particular thing. And then the next week's focused on focus on another thing and you like alternate between weeks. So all of those are awesome. And maybe that's something to look into for yourself. If you're like, Ooh, the a week B week, that sounds like it'd work well in my business. Definitely look into all that you can read about it all over the internet and find other podcasts that talk about it. And I think those things sound so nice, but they have never seemed to work for me. So for me, like doing a whole week focused on only one piece of my business and ignoring other things is not practical at this point and where I'm at in my business. But For me, what does work is spending one day focused on one thing. That's been really amazing for me. And I've done a lot of this lately with working on my course, because I've found that if I'm like, oh, I'm going to spend an hour here and there writing for it, it's just not going to happen. I need to be like this whole day I'm working on it. And then the next day I'm like putting it aside. Um, And I'd love to do a whole week at some point working on it. But again, like it feels less practical to me because of other things I have to do in like client projects and running my template shop and all of that. Uh, But it does help me get in the zone doing it the way I'm talking about. So for me, what this looks like, and again, I want you to figure out like, what should this look like for you? But it looks like batching podcast writing and recording together, batching all my design work together, and then batching things that are like marketing related, like social media caption writing, email marketing writing, those kinds of things together. I also love batching recording videos because then you can just get all ready and glammed up at once and then just change clothes. It's really nice um, to not have to like do those all the time. So those are some things I like to 
to batch, but the goal is to let your mind get in the zone and then you'll get more done because you're allowing yourself to focus on just that one thing versus moving your mind to a lot of different unrelated tasks. So for me yesterday, you guys, I legitimately spent the entire day on my client's project. Like I, and I say entire day, but I actually had a meeting at like 9.30 a.m. that was about 30 minutes long. And then I had a break in the afternoon where I did 30 minutes in my inbox, but I didn't even like text with people. I didn't really post on social media either. Um, I just went to work on the site um, from, I guess, like 10 a.m. till about like 6 p.m. And I really got in the zone and finished up the whole homepage versus if I had been designing a little bit and then I got to write a blog post and I got to record a podcast and I got to do a social post, all of those things. It really makes us less productive. And a cool thing too, even as I say that, I actually did post on Instagram yesterday, but it was a pre-planned post that I wrote during a batching session last week where I wrote about 10 Instagram posts all at once. So it was all done in advance. So my tip for you here is to look at your to-do list or calendar if you do schedule out things on your calendar like I talk about on my podcast. And see if there's any items that you should group together on the same day because they relate to one another and because you'll be able to stay in the flow by doing them back to back. So kind of look for those items and then see how you can maybe group them together so you can stay in a flow state of, you know, writing or recording or whatever it is, designing, coaching, whatever. Okay, so now let's move on to tip number four. This one's going to be a shorter tip, but my tip is take a break. And again, this one, like, please do not turn me off if this feels like, oh my gosh, is a stop too obvious. Um, I get it. That's obvious. But so many of us don't do this. And I can fall victim to this as well. But there are so many studies online, seriously, just Google, it. I'm not even going to reference any because they're all over the place. But talking about how we can't focus on a task for as long as sometimes we want to think we can. I've seen people say 57 minutes is the max. I've seen 25 minutes, whatever. There are different studies that say different things. But thinking that you can just go, 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 go for like six hours straight on something without getting up from your desk is not realistic. And you might actually be able to do it, but your productivity is going down so much with every passing hour or every passing minute or whatever, that if you just took a break, for say like 15 minutes and then went back to your computer fresh, you are literally going to get stuff done faster. So it's like, why would you not do that? And breaks are fun, right? So that's another reason of like, why would you not do that? Um, And in addition to that, like besides just losing productivity, your eyes might start to hurt from staring at the computer too long. Your back can hurt from sitting all day breaks are vital. And when I say yesterday that I was working all day on that client project, I took multiple breaks throughout the day um, to refresh, go outside, um, all kinds of things. So if you're like, okay, Elizabeth, practically though, what kind of breaks could I take um, just in the middle of the workday when I'm working on my business? So I'm going to tell you guys, here are some breaks I do. So first break, I take an actual lunch break. I do not eat at my computer while working at the same time. And most of my lunch breaks are alone. Like I, again, and I don't have I don't have children. My husband works outside of the home, except for during COVID. He's been home a lot, but He actually just started a new job this week, but typically like sometimes he's with me, sometimes he's not. But even if it's me alone, I take a lunch break, typically 30 to 45 minutes. And most of that time I'm not eating. Eating is typically like 10 to 15 minutes of that time. But I make a point to actually take a break um, away from my computer out of my office. Another kind of break I always do is walks. And on this note, I know not everyone has a walkable neighborhood, so this might not be practical for you, but for us, in when I lived in an apartment and in our house now, we have a great neighborhood for walking. We're in a really big subdivision. So typically, at least once a day, I will just walk straight out my front door wearing flip flops. I don't even put on like workout shoes or clothes or anything. Just put in my AirPods, put on some sunglasses, and I'll just do like a 10 minute walk around our neighborhood. And I sometimes will even do like a five minute walk. It's funny because we live up on a hill. Um, our neighborhood's super, super hilly, but we live up on a hill and sometimes I'll walk all the way to the bottom of the hill and then walk back up and that's like five minutes but it just still gets me outside Um, it gets me moving a little bit and away from my computer 
Another type of break I like to do is reading. Um, if you know me, you know I love, 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 love reading. So sometimes I'll take like a 10 to 15 minute break and I get out my iPad and read a book I'm reading. And 10 to 15 minutes looks like in most of the books I read, like reading one chapter, which is a great like kind of away from work break to take. Um, another kind of break is doing errands. Um, sometimes, you know, I'm all about batching errands together. That's something that could have been a tip on here of like, you know, when you need to go to Kroger, also go to the post office and the bank and other things that are nearby. But for me, sometimes I'm like, I just need a break away from the computer for a minute. So I'll throw in a quick errand um, that might not be the most productive thing to do in that moment, but makes the most sense to kind of get me um, away from the computer for a minute. So actually today um, I record, I sorry, I outlined this episode and then I, I typically like to take a little break before I go straight from outlining to recording. So I went to Walgreens and picked up my husband's EpiPen per what I was saying about the emergency room situation last week. So we we got him many prescriptions, but the EpiPen came in now. And so I went and picked that up and then came back and that was like about a 10 minute errand because we have really close to Walgreens. But I went maybe more like 15 minutes, but I went and did that and then came back and now I'm here recording. But that like getting up for a minute was helpful to me. Another type of um, break I like to do is workouts. Um, when you're self-employed, guys, you can make your own schedule. So if you don't love working out in the mornings, if you don't love working out at 6 p.m., um, you can work out in the afternoon or in the mid-morning. So for me, um, I do like morning workouts, but not every day it's as practical for me. So a lot of times I do workouts in the afternoon. I'll take my lunch break. I'll go back to work for like an hour or two, and then I'll go to the gym um, as like a literal break and it'll take me about an hour total round trip between the working out and the driving and all that. Um, another kind of break is just lay down on your sofa or in your bed and close your eyes, take a nap um, or take a pretend nap and just like rest your eyes for a minute. The point is though, taking a break. Um, and again, it, it might not sound intuitive to you, but like taking a break will help you work smarter, not harder, because you're going to be able to be more focused and on your A game when you do get back into the work. All right, and on to the fifth secret to working harder, smarter, not harder. I keep wanting to say harder, not smarter. I don't know why I'm saying that wrong. Smarter, not harder. Okay, um, number five, be intentional about when you take meetings. Um, and I mean meetings for work and for personal life. And this is a mistake I see so many newer entrepreneurs make. And the reason is because when you first start, you're probably not taking as many meetings. You don't have as many clients. You're not doing as many discovery calls. Um, you might not be doing podcast interviews and you don't have um, some main kind of marketing thing you're doing. But at some point in your business, maybe you've already started this up, or maybe you will eventually, but you will likely have a calendar where people are scheduling meetings with you, whether that's your clients or potential clients, or, you know, someone who might be buying a product from you, whatever it is, but people are scheduling meetings with you. And I highly recommend having a call scheduler, because otherwise, you're going to just be going back and forth with someone who's in a different time zone with you trying to figure that out. But basically, people are scheduling meetings with you or you're scheduling meetings with people. But if you have, let's say, four 20 minute meetings, one every hour of your work day, um, you're not going to be able to do batch working like I was mentioning a minute ago, because you're going to be constantly being pulled out of what you're doing for that 20 minute call. And it might feel like, oh, it's just 20 minutes. But when you start having a ton of those, um, you're not really running your own calendar anymore. You're just letting everyone take your time from your calendar without any intention behind it. So I don't think there's any one right way to schedule meetings. I want to say that before I give this advice, but I do think you want to figure out when you want to take your meetings. When is that most productive for you? When does that make sense scheduling with the rest of your life and be in control of your calendar? So maybe you prefer to have one or two days a week and those are the only days you take meetings. You don't take meetings any other days unless it's like an odd week and you have to for some reason. Maybe you have a week where you have four big meetings and you want to do one a day. So you're fresh for each one each time. That's actually how I am with podcasting. 
I don't like to do a ton at once. And next week at the time of this recording, again, I'm recording this early, but I'll have a bunch of interviews all like one or two a day um, in one week versus batching them all in one day because that's what works for me. Um, maybe you only take meetings after 10 a.m. So you get to focus on your business for those first one or two hours of your workday. And then you go into like possibly a meeting after that. Maybe you don't take meetings on Fridays or Mondays or whatever it is. It's totally up to you, but have a plan and not just an open calendar because before you know it, um, your open calendar is going to have like 20 minute meetings every two hours and you never get anything done because you're always being pulled away into these random meetings. So if you're curious though, like what do I do with meetings? Um, it's changed so much throughout my business, but I can tell you exactly what I do right now. So right now, um, and for most of this year, I don't take meetings on Mondays or Fridays, period. Like if you're scheduling a call with me as a client, as a potential customer, um, as someone who's buying something, um, podcast interview, whatever it is, I'm not doing Mondays or Fridays. Um, another thing, we have a standing team meeting over for my team, me and Abby meet every Tuesday afternoon. So during that time slot, I don't take any meetings. And so that's always blocked off like that entire hour plus like obviously the time right before and after. Um, and then unless I'm flexing to someone else's schedule, like a client who's in another country or a podcast interview on someone else's show where they only give me certain availability, I typically only take meetings between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I'm giving myself that first one or two hours of the workday to just focus on my business. And then I don't do after 3 p.m. because I am just not my best self. Um, after a certain hour of the workday, my productivity goes down. It's interesting. I, whenever I'm interviewing other people's podcasts, whenever the interview is later in the afternoon, I can tell that I'm like more sluggish on the call and I do better with morning interviews. So whenever possible, I'm picking those earlier time slots. But again, like we don't always get to pick the time for things. Like for example, last week I was interviewed on someone else's show. Really excited for that interview to come out. Um, but we did it. She's in a different time zone than me. She's actually in Australia. And so we were doing that meeting. I want to say like five. 5 p.m. my time. So I was talking with her from like five to six. And that worked like I made it work that week. Um, but that's typically not what I'm doing. So another little hack I do because I do like to keep my calendar open for that um, Tuesday when I'm available Wednesday and Thursday going into the week. But what I do is in my weekly planning session on Sundays, I look at my calendar and see, okay, what have people already scheduled with me? And I had Tuesday through Thursday open, generally speaking, for both like podcast interviews if I'm asking someone to be on my show or for calls with potential customers for my template shop. I do calls. If you ever want to schedule a call with me, email us and I can give you info on that. But I do take calls for people who are considering website templates. And then also sometimes client meetings, all of that. So I typically have Tuesday through Thursday during those hours I told you open. And then on Sunday when I do the weekly planning, I'll look and see, okay, do I have like no meetings on any of those days already? And I'll block that day off. So like this week, for example, I did have a meeting yesterday, but then I blocked off today because I knew going into the week that I had that meeting yesterday. So then people only really had the option going into the week to schedule with me on Wednesday. Anyway, I know that's kind of that might kind of sound confusing. But basically, like, I leave it open those three days, but then I make it tighter once the week is actually starting. So random stuff doesn't come in on days when it doesn't make sense. But the point is to just be really intentional about when you're taking meetings. Um, you're more taken out of focus than you realize by constantly taking on meetings or errands, or whatever it is. And I also have to say it's so funny, because I, I'm like not even taking my own advice a little bit here. But um, it's just also life for me lately. But you probably couldn't even tell from that way this will be edited. But when I was going through this point number five, I actually got a call um, relating to my dad's estate stuff that I'd completely forgotten about that was scheduled for noon today. And so they called me and I had to take that call. And it was just that was bad planning on my part. But it did take me out of the zone of this episode for a second. I had to re-listen to what I had already recorded. So that's not ideal. And that's what I'm saying, being more intentional about your meetings so that like, you know, if you're doing something like what I'm doing right now, you cannot be like me. Um, and getting out of the zone on something that you then have to get back on the zone on. Um, so anyway, that's just a little vulnerability there that I um, don't get this perfect all the time either. And I schedule meetings I forget about. 
Um, okay, number six, I got two more left, two more big tips. This one's gonna be really short, um, but don't hang out in your inbox all day. So if you scroll back a little bit, go listen to episode 79 of my podcast, if you have not already. It's actually been a really popular episode, but I talk about handling your email inbox better and faster. And so I'm gonna direct you there for a deep dive on this. But one of the biggest time takeaways in our business, I think, is when every time we get a new email, we open it. Even when we're like, I'm not even going to reply right now. Even when we're trying to focus on something else, we open the email that's constantly taking you out of your productivity state of whatever it is you're working on. So quit being in the inbox all day. Um, Maybe like if you get pesky notifications on your phone, on your laptop, wherever, get those off. Um, You don't need the notifications. Um, Instead, be intentional with your inbox time. I'm actually going to do inbox time. Um, I'm going to finish recording this episode. I'm going to take a lunch break and then I'm going to have inbox time. Um, And when I'm in my inbox, I'm going to like, right now I can already see I have like six or seven unread messages that have happened um, since I started recording this and I haven't looked at them, but I am going to you know, dive into those at a time when I'm actually able to be all in and respond versus just looking at them constantly. Okay, and this last tip, this is such a game changer for me. Use a project management tool to track your to do list. And this is good for if you are a team, if you are working solo, it really doesn't matter. And I'd encourage you guys who don't have a team yet, even if you don't think you'll ever have a team, going ahead and starting working with a project management system just for yourself is going to be huge. So you should not be storing all the things you have to do in your brain um, or on a to-do list, on a sheet of paper, on some little to-do list app. That's not where you should be storing Um, all the important things you're doing in your business. So having a project management system is a game changer because you can always know what's being worked on, where you are in a project. Um, You can create recurring to-do lists for things you do multiple times, multiple systems you have, so you don't even have to think about it. Um, So to give you an example of this, because this is a huge time saver for us, but for every single podcast episode, and we've done, you know, 80 plus at this point, every single episode, we have a to-do list that we create create from a template that has exactly every step that has to happen in the order it needs to happen, who it's assigned to, um, notifications happen when one thing's done. So the other person knows that that piece of the puzzle was done. And we have a template we start with one for guest interviews, because those are a little different, and then one for solo shows. So every time I go to record a podcast, I don't have to worry about forgetting a step, because my past self who made those templates based on what we need um, for each episode did it for me. So I just look in the template. And actually, when I'm done recording this episode, I will go into the to do list for this episode, and I will mark off that I've recorded it. And then the person who does the next thing will be notified that now it's time to edit it. And then I'll notify the next person that now it's time to write the blog post for and we just all have it there. And we can all look at any point and see, okay, hey, has that episode been edited yet? Have the show notes been written yet? Have we done the social media graphics yet? Like it's all right there. And with that example, even you can kind of see that like, that's helpful, even if you don't have a team, like if you're doing every one of those steps yourself, or whatever it is, just having that list so that you're not keeping it all in your brain is so huge. And I know some of you might be like, well, what project management system do you use? We use Basecamp. I really, really absolutely love Basecamp. But I want to emphasize that I don't think it's the tool that's the most important thing. And I think sometimes people get hung up on like, which project management system is the best. Um, And then you don't pick one because you're just like hopping around um, from system to system and never, you know, going into one fully. So I would say try a few of these tools, see what you like best for this season of your business and just go with that one and don't obsess over it. So as an example, I've used Basecamp now, um, really for all of 2020 and a little bit of 2019. Before that, though, I used Trello. We used that for like eight months, maybe even a whole year. I've also used Asana. I know I might not be saying that right. I always say the yoga way. So however you pronounce that one, but that's another popular one. Um, And I also use Monday.com. And so I've really tried like a lot of the major ones. And I think they all have pros and cons to them. 
And I've settled on Basecamp for a bunch of different reasons that are not the point of this episode. And it's actually, though, interesting. Basecamp is the most expensive of all of those options, which is um, interesting. But that's the one we settled into. And I like their features the best because I actually put my design clients in it and use it to manage their projects as well. And something interesting about Basecamp is it does not cost more money when you have a bigger team. So the more people I put in there, it stays the same price. Whereas a lot of those others, it might be like free with one person, but then when you add more people, it costs more. So anyway, it doesn't matter which tool you use though is the point. I'd recommend though, like any of those I just said, Basecamp, Trello, Asana, Monday, whatever, go look at all those, um, get a free trial and just try it and see like what systems can I put in here that now I'm going to follow in my business. What's something I do over and over again that I can create a to-do list for and then just run off that to-do list, make it into a template um, and reuse it every time you go to do that same thing. Because it's seriously such a game changer, a time saver, and it gives you more mental space to think about the things that move your business forward because you're not thinking about what's that next step again after I record a podcast interview, you know, I don't have to think about that because it's all just there um, in the project management system. Okay, so like I said at the beginning of the episode, I wanted you guys to think about, okay, what's one of these tips I want to actually move forward with um, this week and put into action. So I'm going to read them out to you again. And as I read this list, think about like, what are two of these that I want to do right now, maybe start doing today. Um, And I'd love for you to share with me on Instagram, which one of these you're going to try. Maybe post it to your stories or send me a DM, um, leave a podcast review about it, whichever one, but I want to hear from you which ones you're going to do. So the first one was listening to the binaural beats. um, And that YouTube video I am recommending or another one you find. Um, The second thing scheduling your entire workday in advance. As a reminder, that's episode 46 of the podcast where I dive into how to do that in more detail. Number three, try batch working. Like however that works for you, it does not have to be perfect, but some version of batching like task with like task. Uh, Number four, take breaks in your workday. Maybe right now you need to take a break. Maybe you're listening to me while you're working on a client project or something, go outside, take a walk, get some fresh air, pause and read, maybe go to the gym, take an actual lunch break, just take a break. Uh, Number five, be intentional about when you take meetings and really protect your calendar. Number six, don't hang out in your inbox all day, have designated inbox time, and then pull yourself out of the inbox to work on productive tasks. Um, And again, episode 79, the podcast is all about inbox management. Um, And number seven, use a project management tool to track your to do list um, and to create systems to always know like, what are you working in your business to move the needle forward? Doesn't matter if you have a team, or if you're a solopreneur, a project management system can be huge. So those are the seven things. Okay, so which ones are you going to try um, for working smarter, not harder? Uh, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, please share with a friend who you think would benefit from it. And I'll be back next week with something new. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to the podcast this week, friend. I appreciate you being here. And hey, if you enjoyed this episode, I want to tell you about something. I would encourage you to check out my website template shop over on elizabethmccravey.com. You'll find show it website templates and they are easy to use strategically designed and created to help you book more clients and customers. Maybe your current website is really boring. I don't know. Maybe it is. And maybe you don't want to hurt its feelings, but you know, it's true. And your website needs to be strategically and intentionally designed in order for it to convert your viewers into raving customers. And that's what these website templates do on MShop. These are pre-made website templates built for the Show It platform where you can plug and play your content into the template with ease and then get started with a website that is made to actually make you money. Isn't that what we all want, right? So go shop the templates at elizabethmccravey.com slash shop. That link is also in the show notes. And don't forget that you can actually subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening so that you never miss an episode. And I would so appreciate it if you left a rating and review for the show on Apple Podcasts, or even just share it with a friend. It's a great way to support the show and then give us your feedback. So thanks so much for listening.